In your book, you talk about uh, focusing on the, the sub 30K market, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you buy for less than 30K. Um, it's just kind of what it's called. So can you kind of explain what the sub, sub 30 thousand market is and then how does your ideal deal work in this uh in this environment so when i first when i, I got my first three properties and i started going on youtube and was talking about it there was so much pushback on like bigger pockets because the people there were like uh, 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 we are not <laughs> advising people to go in those neighborhoods and honestly looking back i see why because if you're not able to navigate in these lower economic so lower social economic places you shouldn't because mm-hmm. you're going to be nervous and they're going to take this for your racist and maybe you're not but because you did not take the time to learn how to navigate, it really causes problems. Because I would tell you, in my community, it's a it's we're more it's more community oriented. We can read people, okay, and we talk to people. And if you come in the neighborhood and don't want to talk to us or interact, you become one of them, and you get treated as such. So I actually understand why there was so much pushback, even though some of it was wrong, some of it was sort of right, but they didn't know why it was right. <laughs> they assumed it was them. They didn't look at themselves <laughs> mm-hmm. and not being able to navigate. They said those people versus looking at themselves, not knowing how kind of navigate around those people. Right. Um, but there was a guy who was like, yeah, like I'm doing it. And he got so much pushback, but he was like, this makes sense. Like you, and he was like, why aren't we doing sub 30 K? And I'm like, sub 30 K. Yeah, we can call it that. So I just ran with it. <laughs> but the reality is it really depends on the city you're in and what market. Sometimes you can find properties under 30,000 and sometimes it is like 30 to 50,000, but basically low income income areas and they usually tend to be minority so either hispanic or black nice and and what is it that you you love so much about the this uh the style of investing and like what's what what's a typical deal for you i mean what do you advise is like a a great deal okay so i love that i really focus on working class neighborhoods Mm -hmm. that's the neighborhoods that i grew up in my dad was a garbage man. My mom worked as a technician in the hospital, modest amounts. Um, and so that's what resonated with me because there's different types of neighborhoods. And so I said 30 to 50 in working class neighborhoods. And so, you know, it's easy for me to recognize. I said it, an, an easy way to explain it to the group is like everyone has more American cards like Fords <laughs> and Dodges than they do foreign cars, right? People wear uniforms versus suits, okay? but they're working. And I know like, and so when I go to these places, I recognize it. I'm like, this is the, the man who has four kids and has been waking up at four o'clock in the morning, every morning to take care of them for the last 20 years. Like my dad, dad worked like these early morning shifts for 30 years without fail. Don't think he was late once, right? Like that is a huge subset of America, like that working class culture, that getting up to work and the people who do it and you can depend on it and they raise their kids in this environment. So I love the fact that I was going back to that neighborhood because I was honoring, look, you're working, you have these studies, you're a mechanic, you're a dental hygienist, you're a teacher, you know, so they're like sort of blue collar, uh, white collar, but not the ones that make like a ton of money. But like, look, I see you, okay? Like, I know you're good people. We were good, we were great people and I know you are too. And so I love being able to go in the neighborhoods, fix it up, it's still modest, I'm still profitable, but they, rec- you know, I gave them a nice place that they can bring their family over and have dinner and they're happy to be there because I didn't not care about it. And I did, I, you know, I don't get to things or I don't fix things or I let the roof leak, right? I don't do yeah. that, yeah. you know? Um, so it's nice to honor like that culture uh, of the people. And, and it's like, I see you, just like maybe no one saw me, but I see you. Um, so I really appreciate that. And what was the second part of the question? Uh, it was kind of an ideal deal. So are you like burring or what, what's, what's it look like? I have to say it depends on what part of the country you're in. So if you're in the Northeast, getting a nice duplex, um, you know, for anywhere from forty-five dollars to $65,000 is a good deal. The rents can vary anywhere from 800 to, you know, 1200 just really depends. And of course, you need to do your due diligence. The Northeast has more crime than other parts in these lower income areas. So you have to be more discerning. Um, like I said, I don't blame people who said don't go there because like for them, for them and what they knew, that was good advice. If you know what I know, then it is OK. Right. Mm-hmm. So no judgment um if you're in the south um the south has actually i've seen this over an eight-year boom because i i work with people every day investing and uh i saw the boom so before in the south like in 2013 to 2016 i'd tell people 
hey, don't expect too much in cash flow. So you might be able to find a $30,000 house, but you might make like 200 bucks at the most. And you have to be very discerning to get that. But everyone's moving to the South as much as they don't like yeah. it. They better get used to it because California and other New Yorkers are moving there. Sorry. Well, that, that stuff behind me right here on the hill, that snow is driving a lot of people there. So <laughs> right? we're moving there. There's so many New Yorkers who live in like Alabama now. So sorry, not sorry. Um, <laughs> So, um, so before it'd be like, oh, don't expect much. You might get a nice house and the house might be in really good condition because the price cost of living down there is low, but people keep their houses up. But now it's actually growing because there's like, you know, different cities have a lot of people moving into them. Um, and then, so yeah, so then it might be 30, the prices have risen. So it might be like, it really just depends, but, um, you know, 50,000 is a good good bet sometimes less it just depends on not all southern states are the same louisiana is different than mississippi yeah 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 so i mean that's a a, a solid i mean if, if you're mm -hmm. looking at you know 800 to a thousand dollars uh in in rent and and you're paying you know 40 maybe even 50 for it um you know mm -hmm. that's that's some you know taxes are yeah. probably going to be pretty low um yeah. especially in the south typically mm -hmm. so yeah, that's a, that's a solid deal. So um, Absolutely. And they add up if you don't have tons of money, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Over time. A lot of people, right. A lot of people will buy these higher end properties um, with higher expenses. The cash flow is exactly the same or less sometimes on the higher end properties. Yeah. They're banking mm -hmm. on the appreciation, but they're the ones that lost everything during the downturn, you know, and, right. you know, if you've got something affordable, you're, it's not going to, go up or down as much, but you got that cash flow. So it's awesome. um, during COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So we've been during COVID. So there's a couple of things that insulates, you know, when you target the people on the bottom, you have the most resilience. I'm gonna tell you a couple of things. It's funny because in our properties in the properties of my group, first of all, we get good tenants. First of all, we, we, we're going to give you a good house. We're not slumlords. We really take pride in that because we come from that. Right. Um, but, you know, we're working class. Right. That's specifically what we look for. So our people are essential. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> the suits, I don't know what y'all suits are doing, but like in a lot of ways for most of our clients, we've been okay because they're either, you know, retired or they're, um, and have their pensions coming in that were stable. Um, or they are, they were working during the whole COVID thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing was that, um, so that was a level of resilience during this last year with COVID. And also for you as a landlord, it's one thing to have a house that's very expensive and you're paying 900 a month and you're going through your own issues and your own business is doing things. But you know, when it's $350 and you have a renter in, even if they don't pay for a few months, 350 for like a, a white collar or a professional person, that is something you can handle for a few months and you don't have to lose your house. Where if it's a thousand dollars a month, like some of these higher end places and the tenants not paying, well, you doing an extra thousand on top of this situation is a lot more challenging. 